Now you ain't seen nothing like this motorcycle right here and neither have I, I'm really excited to show it to you. But like most Italian motorcycles, it's got a lot of unusual features that I can't wait to tell you guys about. Let's do this. Now every motorcycle enthusiast, a true motorcycle enthusiast, has to own or at least want to own a Moto Guzzi at some point in time in their life. The question is which one are you gonna get? The problem is Moto Guzzi has done such a good job, a phenomenal job at blurring the lines between a um, you know, powerful machine and art. And they've made pieces like this that feel just at home, you know, sitting in a dirty garage next to a bunch of Harley Davidsons and sitting behind glass in a, some famous art piece with a, bunch of, with a bunch of rich people walking around wearing masks, eating crumpets and drinking wine, whatever art people do. But this... This right here is the Moto Guzzi Grizzo. But the, and, the first, and the first question you have to ask yourself is, what the heck is a Grizzo? It sounds more like a Muppet than a motorcycle. To the common American like myself, Italian motorcycle names normally seem kind of dumb, with the exception of the V7 Racer, and that's just a very, you know, of course, that's what it's called. But names like the Norge GT and the Aldens, if that's how you say it, and California, what does that mean? These names are just, they just sound silly. But to an Italian man, these names all have references, just like the Grizzo. If you were a young lad growing up near Como, Italy, which is where the, uh, the Guzzi factory is located, then you would have known that the evil bad character from the betrothed was named Grizzo. And this story took place just an hour away from where the factory was. So in the same way that Ducati named one of their most iconic motorcycles the Monster, Moto Guzzi did the exact same thing, but in more of a poetic way. So one company names it the Monster, the other company names it after a monster. This would be the equivalent of Harley Davidson naming one of their motorcycles the Hillary Clinton. Now the first thing you'll notice is the transverse V-twin. With a few exceptions throughout the years, like the Honda CX500, Moto Guzzi is one of the only companies that configures engines like this. And it really makes for a unique feeling when you get on it and ride it. It's similar to the boxer engine of the BMW in the way that it feels like it wants to pull itself over when you're revving it at a stop. When you get a chance to really look at this motorcycle, you realize that they really put a lot of thought in this design and every little inch is meticulously perfected to the way they wanted it to be. And the designers did a good job, but also the, the the, uh, the builders did a great job at putting it together. This is the power plant of the Grizzo, and it is a very large 1151cc transverse 90 degree V-twin that creates a whopping 110 horsepower and 80 foot-pounds of torque, which is pretty impressive for this motorcycle. The power makes its way from the engine, through the six-speed gearbox, through this very unique swing arm slash shaft drive. You can tell it's a single-sided swing arm, but it's all the same piece. So they're able to reduce some weight by making the shaft drive and swing arm all the same unit. And then goes right into these uh, sport bike size tires, which are uh, 180 17s and that goes to the ground. The entire bike weighs just under 500 pounds, which if you compare that to a sport bike, like a super sport bike, it might be 50 or 60 pounds heavier than one of those bikes. If you compare it to a random work of art, could be 50 tons lighter than whatever work of art you're comparing it to. It also has a really, really comfortable, almost like Corbin-like rear seat. Oh, this is a Corbin rear seat. This one has a Corbin rear seat on it. It's got really comfortable ergonomics. Um, they are very sport bike-ish, but more closer to like a naked street fighter because the bars kind of come up closer to you. It is something that's not where you're down like this, where it's like a sport bike, um, where you'd be clipped down here. So it is a pretty comfortable ride, and you could be, you, I could see myself on this bike for hours and hours, you know, days at a time. It also has the world's largest looking gas cap filler uh, display that I've ever seen. I mean, that's like, I don't know, like an 8x8. Eight eight. It's ginormous. Now, another thing that the Europeans do, where the Japanese really don't and the Americans really don't, is just um, they're okay with, with asymmetry where things just being, not everything being even. Like over here, we have a big giant oil, oil cooler on the side, which would normally have been somewhere up front, but they're fine with just sticking it right on the side. And in the end, it's just a really, really pretty bike that chances are you may never see one again, and you're never gonna roll up to a, to a bike show or an event or anything, and then park next to the exact same bike. It's just, it's probably not gonna happen. But there's one last thing to do, and let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and take it for a spin.
Guys, before we do this test drive, let's do the uh, words of wisdom. Ephesians 4, 1 through 2. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I added another verse to that one, guys. Let's do the test drive. All right, so the, the, the shifting on this bike and the, and the lower gears feels very precise. You know when you've popped it in. You know, I, I like it. You know, it's not soft. It's like a pop, pops in very nice. It's a, it's a good, uh, it's a very rewarding feeling. That's what you want when you're riding a motorcycle. You want to be constantly felt like you're getting rewarded about something. Now it's cold, so we're going to have a hard time getting all those 110 horsepower uh, you know actually gripping but man a beautiful day outside so something you'll read about these motorcycles and I'll get into it a little bit but just how well they they handle you know it's a it's a good it's a, it's a very planted feeling motorcycle it's got good power it's got good low-end torque which is a very rewarding way to come creeping out of that corner you know, you're not downshifting, just staying in whatever gear, third, fourth gear you're in, whatever, and then just grunt yourself out of it. I believe these are the stock handlebar risers, and they are very comfortable. A lot of times on motorcycles like this, you'll see people uh, modify them and put bigger risers on there, but I really like, I think that's really perfect. You see right there, I'm in, I don't know, third gear, fourth gear. I, I dropped it to like 10 miles an hour. I just grunted my way out of it. It felt good, wasn't spitting and sputtering or nothing like that. Eee. That's a nice, just a nice feeling. It's got a really good rumble to it. A lot of different motorcycle manufacturers, they all have their own V-twins and they're all very unique. They all have a nice little rumble to it. Although generally they're all getting smoother. Even, even Harley, Harley's gotta be one of the smoothest V-twins out there now. That's got a very unique feeling and it feels great. Just brings a smile to your face every time you twist that throttle. Very enjoyable. Now if I was gonna be riding this for too much longer, I would wanna adjust the, I think the rear brake is a little high. It's hard for me to really sit there and cover the rear brakes. So I would wanna pull that up a little bit. Up here, once we get on the uh, the on-ramp, I'll do my best to do it as here to 60. I don't think I'm going to do this bike justice just because, I mean, look right there, there's ice in the middle of the street. So chances are these tires are never going to get up to temperature to where they're actually going to grip. And I'm going to be doing a lot of spinning. When I was selling motorcycles for SR at, at SRK Cycles at the dealership, one of the first motorcycles I ever bought was a Moto Guzzi. And it was a Norge GT, and it was their off-road. and. Uh, their adventure bike. It was their adventure bike. And it was a really cool bike. It had a very unique feel to it. A lot of weird, you know, quirky things about it. And um, I sold it to a guy who was very, it was very interesting, but he used to own a BMW franchise, like a BMW Motorsports Moto Rad franchise. And I was like, why do you, why would you buy a, a Moto Guzzi Nord GT and not a, um, not a BMW R bike? And he's like, there's something about it. There's just something very unique about these bikes. I'm not even gonna try a zero to 60. It just, it's, just, it's, it's not gonna do the bike justice. The last thing I want is someone be like, hey, I think the zero to 60 is so slow. Let's just see how this thing runs on the highway. She pulls, and she pulls very well. I'm, I'm, I'm in sixth gear, I'm doing 65 miles an hour. RPMs are at 3,600 RPMs. The thing's just barely working. It's effortly doing this, and that's what you would expect from a large, big bore V-twin, you know, almost 1,200 cc's. It, it has no problem doing this stuff. Um, you don't need very much power to cruise on the highway at the speed limit. Where you do need a little more power is when you're not going to downshift and you just start, you just want to roll into that throttle and pass somebody. And this thing's got all the power in the world to do that.
And in many cases, you know, I, I like having that extra power around. You know, it's one of those things where people are like, what do you need all that power for? You can't use it. Well, I can use it. You're using that, you're using that extra power when you're not gonna downshift, you're gonna stay in fifth gear, and you're gonna roll out and you know and at, at these higher speeds. I honestly feel more comfortable having higher, having more power when you're riding a motorcycle. It gives you this one extra tool in your toolbox, you know, to one of those, oh shoot, the tractor trailer is creeping in on me. I can brake, maybe I can't. Look in the rearview mirror, maybe you can't brake. Or what I could do is I could accelerate out of the situation. And not that many vehicles on the road can accelerate faster than a motorcycle. This is a good, this is a good motorcycle that if you don't want to go full on sport bike or full on naked street fighter bike, but you want something a little cooler looking with a little more class, a little more maybe even business oriented, you know, something you could rub on a business meeting and people are like, oh, let me, let me ask that guy some questions about it. Not like, look at this scoundrel. It's a perfect bike for that. Guys, that wraps it up. Check out, um, I'm not wearing my gloves today. I'm not wearing the M1 Moto gloves because they are, it's too cold for it. They max out at about 40 degrees. Anything colder than 40 degrees, you gotta get a different pair of gloves. But they're also perfect. I've, ne I've never, it's never been too hot. I've ridden in over 100 degree weather and my hands were not sweaty at all. So when you're looking for gloves, there is no four seasons gloves, only three seasons. And um, we actually named them now. They're the Crash, Crash 508s and Crash 507s. The M1 Moto gloves are perfect. Guys, that wraps it up. We'll see you guys next time. Check this next video. And remember, it's not what you're it's not what you're riding, but where are you going? See you guys later.